So I've turned off the mic filter to see if maybe you can hear that because I'm about to start recording a video and they're now renovating a unit near me and all I can hear are angle grinders. It's delightful. Hi there, it is I, Kevin Blades, head weirdo of Operation Puppet, and despite appearances, this is not a live stream, I am recording this. Um, however, uh, what these videos are going to be are um, uh, supplemental and interstitial videos to the live streams, because uh, through the course of the live streams, we're creating new puppet patterns from scratch. Sometimes I want to iterate on those or refine them a little bit, but I don't want to slow down the pace of the live streams, so I'm gonna make videos like this. So that way, instead of just telling you on the next live stream what I did, I can show you what I did. So that's what this is gonna be, but we can edit these and uh, they'll go they'll go pretty quick. Uh, so um, that's what we're gonna do. Today, we are going to refine the body pattern we did on, uh, I guess, the second previous uh, live stream. If you check the playlist, it'll be in the playlist and I'll see if I can put a card up for it uh, so you can get to it real quick. But Let's go. So here is uh, the body that we made on stream before. And uh, this is exactly the same one that was done on stream. Um, and as you can see, it's okay. Um, the goal was to make a sort of cylinder with a little beveled top. Um, and that's pretty much what we did. The problem that I'm having with it is that these darts are a little too square, it's kind of boxy, and that's because there's only four darts. So I'm gonna refine this pattern a little bit to try and make this curve a little smoother and make this a little rounder and less boxy. So there are two things we're gonna do to the pattern uh, to accomplish that. So the very first thing that we can do to help with uh, how these darts uh, appear uh, so square is on the pattern. Let's go to the top camera, here we are. So here's the pattern itself. And as you can see, uh, these darts are straight. And this is one of the things is when you when you join these darts together, they just make a corner. Uh, and that's what's happened here. So if we make these curved, you'll have a gentler slope. It'll be it'll be a little rounded. Um, and the other thing we can do to make this less of a square, of course, is just add more darts. So the thing we have to remember is we want to keep this diameter the same. So in order to do that, um, we're going to have to reduce the width of the existing darts and then add more darts. So we're basically doubling the number of darts, but having their width. That's all. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to trace this pattern and then make these darts narrower, add more darts right in the middle, exactly in the middle. I'm just going to measure it out. Uh, and um, that's it. And I'll show you that um, after we come back. I'm just going to do like a speed ramp. So this is all going to be time lapsed. So you're not going to have to sit here and watch me for an hour do this. Um, but uh, let's go. Let's do it. All right, here we go. So here's the original body pattern. And here's the one I just made. So as you can see, all I did was double the number of darts, but make them half as narrow and also give them a gentle curve. Now, I didn't um, like measure the curve or anything. I just kind of eyeballed it. That'll be fine. Um, I like a little bit of organic, you know, asymmetry in my builds, as I've talked about before. If you want, you can absolutely like, you know, use a proper measuring tool or a compass or something and, and make these curves mathematically correct. I just eyeballed it. It'll be fine. Um, but there we go. So now when we put all this together, this should give us a much more gentler curve than this. The other thing we're going to do is I'm going to make the pattern for the fleece uh, skin. And 
what I'm going to do is basically the opposite of this. For the fleece, we want to reduce the number of darts. Now remember that the fabric is stretchy and much more flexible uh, than the foam, so it will kind of conform to the thing that we wrap it around. We could drape it, but in this case, I'm trying to keep it real simple. We're not going to get into draping just yet. We'll do that on a future video. But um, what I'm going to do is instead of adding more darts, I'm going to take darts away. I'm going to half the number of darts, but increase their width by two. And that way we're only going to have darts on the sides. We're only going to have darts on the fabric on the, on the sides. And that'll kind of give us a guide for where to put the arms as well. Um, but that way we'll have the, the front nice and clean uh, and uh, no darts, no seams. So that's the next thing to do. All right, so let's see where we are at here. So here's our original right here. And from that, we've gone doubling the darts, but having the width for the foam and uh, having the darts, but doubling the width for the fabric. Hope that makes sense. Um, you can go with the original uh, and this fleece pattern. This would work as well. But uh, I mean, maybe you're making a character and you want some boxiness. Maybe you're making a robot or something and this would actually be appropriate for the character. So you could absolutely go with this original pattern. This will work. I just wanted to refine it a little bit. Uh, so that's where we're at. So what we're gonna do next is uh, get some foam and uh, make this pattern in the foam. really should have cut a piece of foam before I started recording this. This isn't a live stream. I can prepare better. Oh, well. Oh, here's a little word. Uh, I, I know I've spoken about this before, but it's worth iterating. Even when you've got a piece of foam that's that's been flattened, let's say you get it off the roll, uh, all foam will generally have kind of a natural curve to it. You can see here. Um, you can get rid of that, but oftentimes you can make that work for you. If we know, for example, that we're making a cylinder that's going to be like this, we can just lay the foam down so the natural curve of the foam goes in the direction that we already want it. So there's a little tip. I forgot we need two of these to make get to make two of these. Since these darts are small, I am going to use my foam cutting shears. Um, absolutely use a razor blade if you'd like. All right, we have our body pieces all cut out. Now we're just going to glue them together. I'm going to start with the darts and then we'll just glue the two halves together. Opening the window and getting the mask and turning the fan on. So we are venting outside. Always follow all safety precautions. It is time to menace Batman! Here we go, time for the hair dryer. All right, so here we go. As you can see, much more rounded, much less boxy. 
Um, these darts could stand to be a little bit wider. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Uh, we are going to put some boning in here, which will, which will, you know, we can control that. Um, but you know, you can see the profile is much, much gentler and much more rounded. So this is, this is where we're going. I like it. So we are going to put some boning in here. Um, which means that this will be like hold its shape a lot easier. We're going to put uh, a ring of boning in the top and a ring of boning in the bottom. And, uh, and that'll be great. Um, but we're going to go into that, I think, in more detail, probably on the live stream. So I won't do that right now. What I will do right now, however, is uh, make the fabric skin. So let's do that. We'll get our pattern. Like so. And throw this away. And let's get some fleece. Okay, so um, to lay out our fleece, as always, we want the stretch going sideways across the direction. Always want to go at 90 degree angles to gravity. So we want to make sure the stretch is going this way, not this way, and it is. So we're good. Now, is this going to be wide enough? Because remember, we're going to mirror this. We need this twice the width. Yeah, I think we're good. We are also going to do a seam allowance. Um, we're going to hand stitch the darts, but we are going to do uh, a machine stitch down the down the very back seam. So we are going to want, you know, maybe quarter to half inch seam allowance on the sides. So let's trace this. It should work there. It's not a waste. Uh, down at the bottom, if you want to add a seam allowance as well, we can use that to wrap around the inside. That's probably a good idea. We're also going to add a seam allowance from the bottom. All we gotta do is take our pattern and when we trace it once, we're gonna mirror it. And trace it again. There we go. Now we're gonna add some seam allowances so we're going to put one on the bottom we said let's go down half an inch i think on the bottom and half an inch on the sides. I do half an inch. You can do a quarter inch if you're a little bit more dexterous with your machine. And remember, we don't want to sew the darts. So let's put a line where the seam allowance ends, right? We only want to cut, we only want to sew from this point. So we'll just make sure and we know where the dart starts and we'll go down half an inch from that. Feels weird talking to nobody. But I know you're here with me in spirit. Okay, now we're going to cut it out. Um, the other thing you might want to do, I should mention this now, for the neck, what we're going to do with this particular puppet is we are just going to stitch the neck of our head right onto this. So we don't need a seam allowance at the top. If you want to do a neck sleeve, like a neck tube down the entire length of the puppet, that's always a good thing to do. We're going to cover that in a later stream. Um, this is uh, real simple. So we're going to start with just stitching the head to the the body 
Um, we don't need a seam allowance for that. If you are gonna take this and wrap it around the inside of the body, then you do wanna add maybe like a half inch seam allowance there, but we're not gonna do that for this one. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pin this together uh, inside out, like so. And remember, we just want to sew this line here. That's all. Um, I'm going to use clips instead of pins. Pins are always better than clips. They, uh, they don't let the material slide around as much. Um, clips are faster. I like clips when I'm working with fur. And I also got a new sewing machine with a walking foot that will help hold the fabric in place. So it's not that big a deal. This also isn't super, you don't need to be super precise with this. Um, so I'm just, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna use sewing clips. Uh, they're, they're handy. But pinning, uh, pinning is desirable uh, over clips always. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, time to get the new machine. Probably switch to this camera. Yeah, that's a bit better. I got a new sewing machine. Look at this thing. A little intimidating. Uh, oh, I've got a thread of bobbin. I don't have a bobbin with this color thread on it. Uh, hey, how you doing? Uh, everything went fine with the new machine. It is perfectly calibrated and uh, everything is fine. I don't think there was any problem at all. I don't know what you're talking about. Is that, right? is that good? All right. Are you done swearing? Okay, let's see what we got. Yay, everything is fine. See, I told you everything is fine now. This is, this is fine. Everything is good. How are you? <laughs> oh, okay. So now that we've got this done and everything is fine, like, like I said, um, I'm going to trim off here. Let's go. Top camera with the big thing in the way, of course. But here, let me let me move this. Good heavens! I'm really glad this isn't a live stream. <laughs> I would have tested that more as a live stream. Okay, here we go. So now that we've machine sewn this seam, we're gonna trim off the seam allowance, like so. I know I was off camera. Sorry. Hard to stay on camera. I don't know what Frankie was doing in here. What was he? Okay. So now all we have to do is stitch up these darts. So just there and there. So I'm going to hand stitch those. We will time lapse past that because who needs to watch me hand stitch something? Uh, so I will see you after I am done hand stitching. This camera, this is the hand stitching camera. It's nicer to, to talk to people who aren't there. It's cold and there's no barge out anymore. I can close the window. This is why I'm off camera, because I'm closing the window. All right, so there we go. We are, our darts are stitched. So let's go back here and look at how it turned out. So uh, what I didn't really think about before I started this was, um, this is gonna mean that the, the seam is on the side, not the back. We, we kind of want this in the back. So really the way we've done it, we're gonna have a dart in the very front, but that's still okay. That should be fine. Um, 
Let's just see how this lays. This isn't gonna lay perfectly because we haven't got the boning in here, so this will be a little bit squishy, but you can just sort of see how this all fits together. Hear me, baby, hold together. I'm quoting Han Solo a lot today. Um, what I'm gonna do as I'm as I'm putting the skin on is I'm just gonna sort of follow the, the back seam. I'm just gonna sort of designate the back seam and then follow it. Yeah, that's not too bad. I think we can make this work. Got some strange scraps of uh, of thread. I don't know what that's from. That's there couldn't have been a mistake or anything, and the machine couldn't have brand new and perfect. Everything's fine. <laughs> so here we go. We've got the skin now on the body. So this is a little bit harsh. That's okay. But we're gonna we're gonna seam blend this a little bit. We haven't seam blended this yet. Um, the stitch I used for the darts uh, is actually a baseball stitch done from the inside. We'll talk more about stitching, like hand stitches and the different the different stitches you can do uh, in detail on the live stream. Um, you can do any stitch that you like. If you're doing it from the inside, you should do at the very least a, um, a whip stitch, a uh, locking whip stitch for preference. Um, and that'll, that'll work perfectly fine. If I'm going to seam blend it and I have access to the inside, um, there is no use for, for doing a ladder stitch. It is better to do either a baseball stitch or a whip stitch and then seam blend. Um, but there we go. That's not too bad. We've got our nice little taper at the top. And uh, yeah, so there we go. There's where we are now. So what we're gonna do next, um, maybe we'll do this on stream, um, is we're gonna put the boning in and then we're going to uh, wrap this around the bottom and glue it on. Now, there's a number of ways you can finish the bottom. Um, we can put a sleeve on here if we want. Um, you don't have to, um, particularly for a body like this sort of tube style. A sleeve is a bit uh, extraneous. If you're gonna put a costume on this, then that may be more than you need. Um, other than that, we should be good to go. So we're gonna put boning in the top, boning in the bottom, and we are gonna stitch um, the head directly onto this. So we'll we'll do that uh, in future. We may actually do the stitching part in one of these videos rather than the stream, but here we go. So our body is kind of done uh, other than the boning, but uh, we'll, we'll take care of that on the next stream. So hopefully uh, I'll see you there. And uh, that should do it for today's absolutely perfect nothing went wrong stream at all. Uh, so Thank you for watching. As always, like, subscribe. You can buy me a coffee if you like. That would be great. Um, that will uh, encourage me to do more of these. Uh, and uh, also, uh, any money that the stream or these videos make goes right back into the stream. So that's all good. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day, and hopefully we'll see you on the next live stream.